As Don has noted, the University of Missouri is one of our state's most important and precious assets. The university not only serves our state, it helps define us. It has helped define us since 1839 when we were established as Missouri's first land-grant institution. It defines excellence in education as our state's foremost public institution for higher learning. It defines our future by providing high quality, affordable education for the generations that will follow us. And it expire, inspires our collective resolve and our clear vision to ensure that we take what's great today and make it even better. And we take what may need to be worked on that's good and take it, in fact, to the next level as well. After my discussions of the past few weeks, some points are quite clear. And again, I believe there is a collective resolve around them. We have to have a compelling vision for the future and develop a roadmap of how to get there. Being among the nation's top 50 universities is table stakes. We must be precise as to what that means and work tirelessly to make that happen. We have to have the highest quality education, and this means ensuring that we are appropriately funded for faculty compensation, for our campus and healthcare infrastructures, and for our business development and research initiatives. It is up to us to make the case for this support, but we are supported by hard facts in regards to the needs, even as we work to maintain accountability and affordability. We will work to collaborate and create effective partnerships. We'll work to ensure that the resources are, in fact, available from all the sources for those tasks at hand, whether it be the state or federal governments, from our loyal alumni, from businesses that count on our graduates for their workforce, from those that we can work with on research and business development initiatives. And as a new president, I look forward to working with the four chancellors, with Brady Deaton of Columbia, with Jack Carney of Rolla, Tom George of St. Louis, and Guy Bailey of Kansas City, and with Jim Ross, the Chief Executive Officer of United of University of Missouri Healthcare, and an outstanding faculty and staff to be certain that we have the vision and the plans to achieve this agenda. You know, sometimes when you embark on a new role like this, uh, you may look at the playbook and find it lacking, or you may look at the cupboard and find it somewhat bare in terms of preparedness. But that's not the case at the University of Missouri, and I want to particularly recognize and thank Dr. Gordon Lamb. As our interim president since April, Gordon has provided wise leadership and he has sustained and, in fact, helped create momentum for this university. The Missouri 100 Initiative, bringing together influential supporters of the university statewide, is just one example of Gordon's leadership. He has traveled our state to nurture a sustained public conversation about the value of public higher education and helping Missouri maximize its opportunities. And Gordon, I want to thank you for your service. I am pleased, and, and this may be another one of those uh, secrets not kept, uh, but that you should know that I have asked Gordon, and he has agreed to stay on during 2008 in the role of Executive Vice President for University. This will, <laughs> this will be a significant role in support of my presidency in the university. Gordon will be at my right hand in support of the agenda that's in motion and in the new initiatives that we will collectively define. Once again, Gordon, thank you for your service to the state and to the university. My uh, final comments for today, or at least for today anyway, are about understanding the impact of change to everyone involved in this process as I come on board. At the end of the day, it will be about leadership by me and all of us involved in this process that will define our success. I come into this with a lot to learn. I need to go back to school, if you will. But I am eager and I have a deep appreciation and respect for what's represented by the academic responsibilities of this university. You know, the way this usually works is the burden of proof falls to the new guy, in this case, me. But I will tell you that I've had the privilege of leading large organizations for a number of years. From that experience, I know this to be true. Organizations and the people that make them up want a vision. They want a strategy and a roadmap about how to get there. They want to know along the way how we're doing, a report card on progress. They want to be recognized for their contributions and to be simply thanked for their efforts. They want to be engaged and not just observers along for the ride. They want to be trusted and empowered to do their jobs. They want to be associated with excellence 
And the image or the brand, in fact, of the organization has to be positive and compelling. They want to be respected as individuals for the diversity of thought, for their academic freedom, if you will, and diversity of being. They want their leaders to anticipate change, not just to manage through it. They want their leaders to get it, to be knowledgeable and engage themselves, to be great communicators and have passion for the mission of the organization. That is the tone that I will work very hard to set for this great institution. And to paraphrase, if I may, Ralph Waldo Emerson, an organization is in fact a reality of the lengthened shadow of its leader. I ask for your help and support as I work to earn the confidence of the curators that have entrusted in me to lead this university as president. And today I pledge to give you my very best effort. Thank you. Thank you.